Hi friends, welcome you to the entomology class. So far we have completed different aspects of sericulture. One of the left out portion is the pests and diseases of mulberry crop, which is the main food for the mulberry silkworm production. I'm your teacher Vignesh. Let's get into the topic. <music> of insect pests that is feeding on the mulberry we divide them based on their feeding habits starting from the um, sucking pest which is mostly feeding on the phloem level of the crop as they are only feeding on the liquid portion of the plant is mostly by the sucking the sap of the plant with their sucking mouth pot the first sucking pest that is coming under the category is the pink mealybug it is Meconolicacus hirsutus, it is the most important under this category. This is how do they usually appear. It is the egg sac and the nymphs that is emerging from that. It is the immature one and the matured adult. Usually they will be having mealy coat over there which makes us hard to control this pest. When we see the type of damage that causes, mostly the nymphs and adults they do the major part of the damage by sucking the sap by sucking the sap the nutritive value of the leaf decreases and the leaf yield and the plant height decreases well we see the symptoms uh, usually it will be the leaf will be seen in the malformed disc condition and the retarded growth will be seen and the wrinkling and curling of the leaf will be observed it's to the yellowness and the brittleness of the leaf is commonly called as a tukra disease or the bunchy top disease due to the higher sucking of the leaves they form the bunchy appearance which is called the tukra disease the management aspects starting from the cultural practice if it is in fewer isolated location usually we uh, cut the affected area uh, and remove them and in even the population is more we go for the chemical spraying like the clovers and the cryptolomus mandrosari which is commonly called as the mealybug test drive which is used in 750 beetles per hectare is released in mass number or the simnus coxivora this is also mealybug feeding coxinellid insect which is also used in 1000 beetles per hectare this is what we have been talking about the mealybug test drive the cryptolomus mandrosari which is the adult and the grub form both they feed on the mealybugs by which we can control it control the mealybug population effectively uh, by means of the natural or the biological control. Cryptolomus mandrosa has been highly and effectively used in case of the management of the papaya mealybug. This guy is Simnus coxivora. This is also a mealybug feeding natural enemy. This is the symptom we are talking about the tukra or the bunchy tub. As they are feeding on the sap, the plant forms the bunchy appearance which is called as the tukra. These are a few more symptoms that is uh, tukra disease appearance. The second type of mealybug that is common in mulberry is the papaya mealybug that is Paracoccus marginatus which is usually found on the papaya crop in few years back it was it, it caused havoc in the cultivation of papaya as they destroyed most of the papaya plantation wherever mealybug destroyed the cryptolomus mandrosuri has been int uh, introduced and the successful management of management of the crop was possible due to the natural enemy they lay their eggs in the ov sacs which will be covered by the mealy secretion which protects the uh, eggs from the spraying and this is the emerged new the crawler the names and the adult one uh, when they are maturing and they form the winged adults it is usually formed when the population is more they develop the wing to migrate it to the nearby areas this particular mealybug is quite common when we are having the papaya cultivation nearby there are a few symptoms you can see in case of the papaya mealybug infestation you can see the um, cotton moss like uh, appearance in the in the mulberry cultivated area followed by the leaf deformation and chlorosis also you can see that and due to this it's a creation which is called honeydew due to that um, the the capnodium fungus grows on that which forms the black shooty mold growth on the plant which is called a shooty mold these are the few more symptoms and the next important sucking pest is the jassy or commonly called as leaf hopper and posca flavans 
the damage will be the quite same the due to the sucking nature of the nymphs and adults the nutritive value of the leaves decreases in the tender leaf mostly they feed on it uh, when they are feeding in more like in rice crop the hopper burn symptom happens uh, we can uh, observe the drying nature uh, in the periphery to the midrib of the leaf we can see that and ultimately which forms the cup shaped leaf and the leaves start to wither sooner and when the population is more we can grow with the diclova spray as a management practice uh, this is a symptom we have been talking about the periphery region of the leaf uh, start to show the hopper burn symptom and the cupping of the leaf um, proceeds after the damage level is increasing next one is the scales that is called Seisutia nigra and the second scale type that is para Seisutia nigra there are two types of scales in it this is how they look like the black color they will be in black in color when they are maturing usually they feed on the below side of the leaf uh, which will be helped by the ants which will be cultivating them and they will be feeding on the honeydews for the purpose of honeydew they will be helping them to move from one place to another place this is how the matured scales will be looking like they will be completely immobile once they settle and they start to feed and the another type is the red scale anadilia aranti the damage symptom will be mostly same as the nymphs and adults will be shucking the sap and the symptom will be the affected shoot maybe will form the based on the color of the scale we can see whether uh, black or red in color on the yellowish or more tall the leaf we can see it due to the, due to the sucking habit on the branch ultimately dries and the sooty mole grows uh, as the management practice uh, in initially if you find in few localities we can go with the scrapping of the leaf with the blade to dislodge the insects or the spraying with the water also in the initial stages and followed by that if the insect is not controlling you can go with the chemicals like melathion or 2 ml per liter next second question is the spiraling white fly the order dis disperses it is called a spiraling white fly due to the habit of egg laying and the feeding in the spiral nature this is a spiraling pattern of egg laying on the feeding nature in the below surface of the leaf usually the damage symptom on the symptoms are more or less same as the symptom we can see the yellowing of leaf and the curling and crinkling on the shooty mold appearance and the irregular pattern of the spiralings that is the unique symptom of the spiraling white fly and in management as their white flies are attracted to the yellow sticky traps we can install the yellow sticky traps which can act as both the monitoring purpose and for the management purpose and followed by that light trap can also attract this pest and we can go for the removal of the alternate holes like the weeds around the field and when the population is less we can start with the collecting and destroying of the egg mosses of the names and adults and we can go with the spraying of chemicals uh, when their population is more like uh, going with the diclovas or uh, going with the other systemic insecticides like immunoglobate and in case of diclovas the waiting period will be the 15 days after spraying of the diclovas we have to wait for another 15 days to go for the leaf harvest for feeding silkworm larvas the next sucking pest is thrips pseudodentrothrips mori the thrips are having the rasping and sucking type of mouth part as they don't have the left mandible using the right mandible they do the scrapping of the leaves and when the saps are coming out they will be sucking on it so it is called the rasping and sucking type of mouth part and due to the the nutritive value of the leaf decreases and the depletion of moisture across so and ultimately the leaves will be unfit for the rearing of silkworms and the symptom will be the when we are seeing in the early stage the infestation causes the streaks the white streaks we can see that in the later stage the yellowing yellowish browning of the leaves occurs management practice we can go with the blue sticky traps as they are attracted to the blue color and the followed by that if the uh, population is more we can go with the chemicals this are thrips feeding on the leaf of mulberry these are the different stages of thrips you know, starting from the nimble immature and they are proceeding towards the winged adult stage uh, these are the more photos of it mostly the winged forms Thysonotra being the link between the exopteric and endopteric they do have the pupil stage as well 
this is the damage dim sum of symptom of the uh, thrips and that's all about the sucking phase followed by the second category the defoliators in defoliator the main pest that is coming under this is the tobacco leaf caterpillars sprout trolitura as they are having the biting and chewing type of mouth part the damaging symptom will be mostly the cutting of the shoots uh, in from the ink plants and the cut portion may dry and fall down as they feeding proceeds and when uh, the young larva feeds on they usually feeding uh, they usually start to feed by scrapping up the chlorophyll which may cause the windowing or the white color uh, layer uh, is formed due to the absence of chlorophyll as they are feeding initially by scrapping the chlorophyll and uh, the later stages they cause the defoliation by the heavy feeding of the whole leaf uh, in managing this insect uh, yes they usually go for pupation in the soil uh, deep flowing as this has to be followed uh, to expose the pupa to the sunlight and to the birds or the natural enemies so that we can control it culturally as the adults are attracted to the light traps we can go with the light and the pheromone traps also has been effectively used to, to control these insects this uh, moth goes for the egg laying in the egg mosses so we can collect that egg mosses and destroy them these are the collect cultural practices that can be followed and if then the population is more we have to go with the chemicals this is a severe defoliation symptom of that uh, spot of trilatura you would have heard about the this fella the spot after is frugifera which is called as the fall armyworm which is feeding mostly on rice and maize which is having the two races this is the differentiation between the spot of trilatura and spot of frugifera which will be having the y-shaped band in the head region and the four spots in the lateral part of the abdomen you can see the four spots on the eighth abdominal segment which is the peculiar character of this spodoptera frigivora or the fall omi but in case of our spodoptera litura those symptoms are uh, not seen this is the adult of spodoptera litura this is what I was talking about the windowing symptom and the ink larvas are feeding by the uh, scrapping of the chlorophyll we can see that as the absence of chlorophyll the windowing of the leaves takes place here is another symptom the absence of chlorophyll due to the ink larvas feeding next defoliating pest is our cutworm okay, a grotesque species they usually feed on the ink seedlings from the stem level they cut that plant so that they die early and the plant cannot survive as they are coming under the family knock today they usually feed during the night hours so it is quite hard to control them as we cannot see the pest during the morning hours these larva stays inside the cracks and crevices of the soil and they stays there for the night hours so floating the soil during the morning hours also make them to come away from their hidden places and also like the sport of pupation happens in the soil for the cut form too so summer flowing also helps and if you are going for the management practices with the use of chemicals we have to spray the chemical during the night hours as they are coming to feed on them during the night hours next species is the Bihar Hairy Caterpillar Spilosoma obliqua. this also feeds the same way like our uh, previous defoliators wherever we are having the Moringa plantation nearby we will be having this problem of the Moringa Hairy Caterpillar that is uh, Eupterato mollifera and the next Hairy Caterpillar is the Tussa Caterpillar coming under the same genus of Euproctis and the species is different uh, fraterna in case of tussock caterpillar here is another hairy caterpillar that is a brown hairy caterpillar it's also called the tussock moth these are all hairy caterpillars they all come in bulk quantity they come so uh, marching to the um, alberry plantation in groups and they will be feeding like the goat so for these defoliators the damaging symptom will be obviously the defoliation of leaves during the night hours as they are coming and feeding the night hours 
and morning you can see the symptom and reduction in the leaf yield in the symptom if you see that the branches of mulberry pla mulberry plants without the leaves will be seen and the management practices as you already told they will be going for the pupation in the soil so deep flowing on flood irrigation followed by that we can go with the light traps as the adults are attracted to the light and the collection and destruction of leaves with the egg mosses we don't need to uh, collect the whole leaves and destroy we can collect the egg mosses and destroy them and the last one is the management with the chemicals we have to play on chemical only we cannot go with the cultural practices Next one is the Diaphania fulfurillantalis leaf webber with the name itself we can see that they will be feeding by webbing the leaf. The damaging will be like the other defoliators and the symptom with the name indicates it will be folding and webbing the leaves and they will be feeding on the leaves inside the web. So the starting we can see the skeletonized leaves with the webbings starting from the apical tip they will be feeding on the standard growth happens due to their feeding in the tips and also they lay their eggs there only and the leaf quality ultimately reduces in case of the management practices we are after the pruning the flooding is done and the releasing of the pupil parasitoid that is the tetrastichus howardi i hope you are familiar with the terms like um, parasitoids and predator in um, predator it is a larger insect compared to the parasitoid which will be feeding directly on the prey and they will be feeding more than one prey during their life cycle in case of predators as a parasitoid they will not directly feed on the uh, insect prey be laying their eggs on the host and comparatively they will be smaller in size which will be uh, in immature stages feeding on the host and in adult life they will be free living and there are different kinds of parasitoids based on their feeding habit um, like egg laying habit in the pupal parasitoid usually they will be laying their eggs on the pupa and the immature stages will be developing inside the host that is in the pupal stage the fake parasitoid the parasitoid in nodal stage will be laying the eggs of the host in case of trichogramma chylonis which is most important egg parasitoid and the tetrastichus howardi which is the pupal parasitoid should be released in the uh, number of 50,000 per hectare in case of trichogramma colonis they are mostly released in cc the parasitoid cords that is 5 cc per hectare is usually used if the pest not controlled with that we can go with the uh, spraying of dichlorvas uh, with the any other chemical management uh, this one is a tetrastichus howardi and this is our trichogramma chylonis like parasitoid and the other mere insect is the ash weevil this milloceras subfaciatus which will be feeding by notching the leaves in circular shapes this is how they notch in the terminal areas which is a symptom of the ash weevil feeding the minor pest is the grasshopper cytocanthacris tetaria Followed by the leaf feeders, the, here comes the stem borers, the stem girdler, which is the common pest uh, in grapes too, the Sthenius graciator. With the name indicates they will be girdling the stems. In the newly hatched grub, they usually stays inside the stem and when they feed in and they develop into pupa, they come out as an adult and they girdling the stem just like this. Next one is the mango tempora, that is Bactosilla rufa maculata. They will be feeding on it, then the uh, frost is coming out of the bark of the um, mulberries. It, this is a symptom of mulberry stem. This is a symptom in the mango plant. You can see the frost is coming out of it due to the feeding of the stem borer. Here is the more pe pe peculiar one. This is another symptom. And the next bark feeder is the bark eating caterpillar that is Intrabella coordinateta. This is the life stages of that starting from the grub, pupa, and the adult. These temporas mostly occurs when the plantation is not cleaned properly and having a hygienic plantation itself helps the plant from these pests, especially these temporas as they are mostly fine in the when they are 
unhygienic or not well maintained next we are going into the subterranean space which will be feeding below ground level our first space is the termite or it's called white hand that is the odonto termus species they will be forming the nests around the plant and they will be feeding on it mostly the worker cats they feed on it next subterranean pest is the white crab or trichia species here are the others that are feeding on the mulberry plants in case of subterranean plants so mostly we have to go with the same like the stem borers as they are mostly fine in the areas where the maintenance of orchard is poor now we are getting into the diseases part the most important fungal diseases is the uh, leaf spot cercospora moricola the concentric spots will be uh, the common symptom of the disease for the management of the disease mostly the spraying of carbon dioxide is done these are the symptoms you can see the concentric spots next fungal disease is the powdery mildew this phylacnidia corylia you can see the powdery symptom below the leaf surface in the areas where the powdery mildew is a major problem we have to go with providing the wider spacing and we have to go with the uh, the resistant varieties like mr1 and in the higher population of the disease we have to go with the chemicals like carbon dioxide and in some cases there is also releasing of uh, the yellow ladybird beetles also been tried as they are feeding on this powdery mildew too next this is the yellow rust that is cerotelium fissi as the name indicates they will be having the red color rusty spots in the leaf next disease is the root rot that is macrophomia fasciolina this is a above ground symptoms as the root rots the above pods that is the leaves also started to dry up and the occurrence is mostly seen in the summer as the pathogen is most damaging during the summer condition in the initial stages the leaves started to turn yellow and they start to wilt in the later stages we can see the blacker fungus will be visible on the branches too and they usually spread through soil and water that is uh, during the cultural practices these are the below ground symptoms we can see the total vascular system of the root is been disturbed which is stopping the flow of the any material from the root to the top area which ultimately causes them to die off in the areas where the root rot problem is more usually the farmia manure application has been done in huge level like 20 tons per hectare which is not practically possible when the damage is severe we have to approve the plant and and destroy them as they spread from the plant to plant with the cultural practices and application of trichoderma viride which is a soil inhabiting uh, the natural enemy the which controls the particular disease is applied in soil in the soil application with the farmia manure also next important disease is the bacterial blight which will be causing the blighted symptom and the leaves started to show the yellowing symptom later stages they will dry off when the damaging is more we have to go with the bactericides like the streptomycin here is the blighted appearance due to the bacterial blight here is also the same symptom next this is the stem canker that is lesio difloria which is caused by the lesio difloria theobromae in the stem areas we can see the localized uh, drying and we are coming to the nematode pests so not only nematode pests that is tracking mulberries or the root nut nematode the melodia gynae uh, in cochnida they will be forming the nodules in the roots uh, the nodules will be diverting all the food materials from the roots to the nematodes and the plants will be uh, showing the standard appearance as they are not getting enough nutrition from the root in the management practices the deep plowing should be done in the summer where the melodogyne incognita problem is there we have to go with the application of lot of neem cakes which will be around 1000 kg per hectare and the application of carbefuron also been effective which is a good nematicide too carbefuron 3g which will be in the granular formation safe period for this chemical this carbefuron is 
uh, 50 days means we have to wait for 50 days to harvest the leaves after the application of this chemical let's tell about the pest and disease of the mulberry crop we will move to the questions now the question is Tukra disease is caused due to Cercospora, Fusarium, Meconolicacus or all the above comment the answer below second question which is called as mealybug destroyer that is used to control papaya mealybug Cryptolomus mandrosuri, Simnus coxivora, Trichogramma chylonis or none of the above third question which of the following is called pink mealybug Paracoccus marginatus, Aconolus hirsutus, Trichogramma chylonis or Tetronychus find the right answer fourth question is Seistia nigra is mealybug, cutworm, black skull or red scale your fifth question is which is not matched correctly red scale, Onidia laurenti, nigra scale Parasitia nigra, white fly, earlier discussed disperses, thrips, trichogramma chylonis, which is not correctly matched. Tetrasticus hovati is whether it is egg parasitine or pupal parasitine or larval or egg larval parasitine. The seventh question is Thinias grisator is whether it is a stem curler or stem borer or bark eating caterpillar or the internode borer. And your eighth question is root knots are formed by Meldogynae incognita, Cercospora, Lesidiofloria theobromae or Pseudomonas mori. Comment your right answers below. See you in the next class guys. Until then, bye bye.